Whew. All right, here we go. Well, good afternoon. Happy Monday, whatever day of the week it is to you. Uh, it is Monday, right? It is Monday. You like me? Do you have no clue what day it is? I think it's Monday. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the virtual happy hour here on my personal uh, uh, personal Facebook page, right? There you go. Uh, the open sign is on. The happy hour sign is on. So let's move that over there. They go open right there. Uh, the green room is open as well. So you can uh, join the green room. It's right there on the screen right there. Click that and uh, I'll throw you folks on as uh, you hear me, the thumbs up, which means uh, what we usually do when we do these things, at least I do in my uh, T-Bone Faithful, is we, uh, when you hear me, thumbs up means you hear me, which is good. So you are hearing me. Ryan Hyde, good to see you. I told you I'd be a few minutes late, about nine minutes late. Um, it is Monday, so I guess I, I know it's Monday because of all the um, – conference calls, Zoom calls, um, Microsoft Teams calls, generic calls, whatever. So uh, all good. But I do have my beverage of choice today. Got my uh, Belican glass from Belize. And glad everybody's along. Good to see you, Mom, as well. Uh, everybody, uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying well. Uh, again, we're inside today. And I'll give you a shot in just a moment of why we're inside. It's kind of a cruddy cruddy, cruddy uh, weather here. It's misting. I, I, I contemplated going outside, doing this live outside, but every time I would contemplate it from about noon on, I'd walk down there about two o'clock, look around and see how it was outside and uh, it missed or started to rain. Let's see if I can go ahead and pull that up for you guys. And let's just see here if we can find a little bit of a... Uh, uh, let me see if I can pull up that uh, camera for you and give you a shot of the other. Oh, I got to plug it in, don't I? That'd help. That would help, folks, to plug it in. Let's do that live. And uh, there we go. Let's just see what it'll plug in for us, if it will. And there we go. Give you a shot of the uh, – you can kind of see it out there. It's, it's a little eh. – you can see the mist a little bit. It's it's raining. Just trust me. It's raining. Doesn't look real good outside. So uh, don't. Uh, we're not gonna be outside. We're gonna be inside today. Okay. We're gonna be inside and uh, just enjoy uh, time together and everybody just uh, chatting whatever we want to do. Good to see everybody out there today. All right. Monday. Let's see what do we do on the weekend. What did you guys do on the weekend? Let me pull the uh, that that uh, that shot off. Uh, Noel's good to see you. Laura, good to see you. Got Australia watching us here today. In Australia, Lubbock, Dallas, Indiana right now. And everybody's uh, checking in today. Um, Weekend for us here, well, a lot of TV watching, a lot of sitting, a lot of cooking, a lot of dog walking, more sitting, more cooking, more, a little church on Sunday, uh, which is uh, still kind of strange that I that – we had Palm Sunday, and uh, it was from my couch. It was a little odd. All good. Meredith, good to see you as well. We got Kansas City, Australia. Australia. Good to see you, Knowles. How you doing? Well over there. Just uh, I just got off a long call with Australia over there. I hope they're doing well over there. And uh, it's actually uh, very early over there. She's a uh, uh, six forty eight in the morning. I just uh, was talking to Victoria at uh, nine a.m. I guess over there now. So uh, all good. All good. A couple of things off the top. First off, uh, we're prepared today because the wife, if you missed us on Friday, the lovely GM, the lovely and talented GM, uh, WD-40 we call her around this house, uh, Gay Marie had some issues at the bar uh, trying to make her own beverage of choice. And it inc incurred a, uh, there she is, yep, incurred a broken bottle of uh, what you'd make margaritas with. So uh, for, for her help today, we've actually brought in the little baby goose today. I don't have anything, but I brought a baby goose that was dug out of our closet. So uh, there you go. A little baby goose for the wife. There you I go. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, we're not promoting, we're not, hey, you don't have, you can be a teetotaler here. Okay. It's not a big deal. You don't have to have, don't have to be a booze hound, but if you wanted to, it's all good. The idea is it's not the booze part of it. It's the happy hour part of it, which can be, uh, yes. What are you doing? You something plastic. What are you talking about? So I don't break it. Yeah, well, you probably need to have like like the little uh, tippy the cup. little tippy little sippy cup. Yeah, a little sippy cup. She's drinking drinking her margarita of a sippy cup. 
Okay, we're not we're not promoting binge drinking here, so let's just put it that way. All right, we're not doing that. But uh, if you want to have a drink or two or whatever, fine. If you want to have a little iced tea, that's fine too. Eventually, I'll be out of uh, supplies. I'll have to go to the iced tea as well. So uh, glad you're all along here. I'm bonnie good to see you as well. I hope everybody's doing. Wait, what's going on today? How's everybody doing? Tell me, tell me how your weekend was. All right, that's what I want to know. How was your weekend? Uh, how are things in your world? Uh, wherever you're watching us from, I, I'd be curious to know, um, and this would be hard for me, I, and I don't know how my friends in Australia do it, but uh, in those, maybe you can share this with me. You're in Perth, which is in Western Australia right now. It's going to be, uh, again, coming up on 7 a.m. Uh, this time of year, the weather usually is pretty decent in the West. Australia in general, the weather is pretty nice year-round. In Perth especially, uh, having spent so much time there, it's almost it's, it's basically my second home besides Kansas City, and um, the weather is fantastic pretty much this time of year, and they're all in isolation as well. What does that mean for the beach? Because the beaches in Australia and in, in the Western Australia are just phenomenal. And I, Does that mean you – can you go to the beach? Do you have to do six feet from the beach? Because here in Dallas, at White Rock Lake two weeks ago, we had uh, thousands of people. They were out the lake in, in – in, and they were all arm to arm, basically. It looked like a Willie Nelson picnic. Worth a July picnic here. But uh, 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 Kevin says WrestleMania saved the weekend for him. There you go. There you go, Kevin. Yeah, I saw that. Didn't uh, didn't didn't Gronk win or something? Did I miss that or did I miss that when I was watching my uh, Breaking Bad marathon or whatever it was I was doing, Bar Rescue or whatever? Isn't that what happened? Did, did, did Kevin, am I right about that? I think that happened. But uh, Sonia, good to see you as well. Lisa as well. Everybody out there. Sonia, hope you're doing well. Uh, she is a good good friend of mine from uh, my, when I could actually sing back in the day. Lori, good to see you as well. Hope you're doing well. Is uh, What I love about this is that uh, we've got uh, folks from all over the world and all over uh, the, not just the Metroplex, over the United States, and over the world, and from different uh, walks of life. I was talking about this on Friday, how, uh, you know, I break down, and I did this a couple of years ago. I broke down my Facebook group, you know, where I knew people from. And the and, and majority of them, the good majority were uh, high school, uh, high school college stretch. So be uh, high school church friends high school friends from high school, then Texas Tech friends. So a lot of civic highs, a lot of folks I met at Tech or East Texas State or uh, folks I grew up with in Lake Highlands or Trinity Christian. And that's kind of one group. Then I had the group of my baseball folks that, have, that I've met along the way from Jacksonville and, and Iowa and uh, Australia and uh, uh, Kansas City and uh, Gary, Indiana, That those of all in Chicagoland. And around the league, which includes guys like Kevin and a lot of those baseball folks. And that's some radio station folks I know from my radio station career here in Dallas. And then just and then I got miscellaneous here that I – maybe it's a watering hole I frequented before or whatever. So uh, a lot of miscellaneous. And uh, But the, the cool thing is is that, is that this whole Facebook thing brings all those – ideas of people together, which is great. And they're all friends of mine, people I care about. And uh, I'm notoriously one to keep Facebook amongst people I, I really know something about where I keep Twitter. Twitter is more of a, a, a my brand as a broadcaster, Instagram along with that as well. But the Facebook crowd usually is uh, folks that I've been along the journey. I and mean, a great journey, it's been a real God-blessed journey that I'm really proud of and very thankful for. And uh, so it's kind of cool to bring everybody in here. Uh, Kevin says, oh, i got to pull this up here. Sorry, but Kevin, I left you up there. Uh, Kevin says, uh, Gronk won the 24-7 title, which means he can be defeated for it at about any amount of the day. Okay. Okay. And you can scrounge a rev up to make a three count. See, I'm so out of the wrestling, wrestling thing, but uh, okay, I get it. I got it. Okay. So that's, so Gronk it can still be knocked off his pedestal. You know what, though? You get a figure of a guy that's a blessed life, played the Patriots, made all that money, Super Bowl rings. Now he's famous doing wrestling. Do it. I mean, how I mean, how hard is that, right? You got to be a pretty good deal, right? All right. Uh, uh, a question from the peanut gallery or from Lubbock, actually. Have I ever done uh, jail prison time in Australia? Was it fun? 
It, it is. Uh, first off, I've never done jail or prison time um, so in Australia. So uh, it, I can tell you I have no idea, although I would think it would not be very much fun. Uh, but, uh, yes, good question. I have dodged uh, the uh, coppers over there, although I have a dear friend of mine, Maddie Canelli, who is a copper in Broome. And I uh, do want to avoid getting in trouble in Australia. But uh, uh, no, not having trouble in Australia. I really have no trouble at all. I think the only tr the, the closest thing I had to trouble in Australia wasn't involving me, but it was a, uh, a train ride home uh, my first year in Perth in 2013 when I was going down, uh, coming back home, being out at night. It was, you know, midnight, whatever. And a couple of uh, young uh, ruffians got tossed off the train by the local uh, transit police. And they basically picked them up by their shorts and just tossed them off the train to the next stop. And they were sitting about three spots down from me. But that's the closest trouble I've had in Australia, I think. I don't think I've had any other other issues there. So no, I've dodged. I've dodged. Unlike we talked about this on Friday, Ryan brought this up on Friday. Uh, Ryan and I have, have been pulled over with me driving twice. With me driving twice. And uh, uh, yes, they were not... Uh, not good uh, tickets to pay. Both of them cost a, p a pretty penny. And uh, both of them, but different ends of Texas, one in West Texas, one in East Texas back in the late 80s. So very good stuff there. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Noel's asking, uh, at the moment, Pe uh, Perth beaches are open, but if people don't keep their distance, the premier will shut them down, especially this weekend being Easter weekend. Uh, and what, what that, uh, the premier would be, for for us in the states, premier would be the governor. So the governor of Western Australia would uh, shut the beaches down, which is much what's could happen here in Dallas, Fort Worth, if folks don't stay away from the parks and pack the parks and uh, all that. But uh, yeah, the I, I did notice those too. I saw where uh, uh, one of my friends, Ken McGee, was actually walking the dog. I guess out at Swanbourne, which is a beach. Uh, yeah, we got. Uh, for your, for your Australian geography, that's going to probably put most of you guys to sleep, but I'll put – got my favorite beach is Cottesloe, and then it goes Cottesloe. Is it Cottesloe City, then Swanbourne, or is it Swanbourne and City? I forget which way it goes, but it's – they all go n south to north, so uh, very good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Um, I, yes, broadcasting the sun in Brisbane – that was criminal, and actually it was in Sydney, but both both places were bad. True broadcast story. This is true. Uh, I broadcast in Brisbane one night, and if you put Houston and New Orleans and like Orlando and all together in July, that's what it's like. Very humid, very sticky, and it was so hot. They they the press box was full. The home broadcasters had the press box, the air conditioning. I'm the visiting broadcaster, so I had a row right below them in the grandstand with um, my gear sitting on one side of me and and uh, and basically broadcasting among, amongst the fans. And uh, uh, it was so you know I try to you know I like to dress for the for the job I want, not the job I have. And I think you should always dress and represent your ball club with professional manner. And I was in a nice pair of jeans, a nice a nice uh, shirt, and uh, Looked pretty sharp, except I was soaked. And when I got back to the, the hotel and changed clothes to, to have dinner, my wallet was soaked through. It's a leather wallet. It was soaked through. And I couldn't believe it. All my credit cards are wet. It like I'd been swimming. And I had to take the cards out, ATM, and dry them out. The money in Australia is kind of like that. If you've been to Mexico, it's that it's not the paper money we have here. It's got that. That, that softer kind of plasticky feel to it. It's really, I think it's great because you can wash it off and all that and, and no, no troubles. But um, yes, uh, that money was even uh, a little, little damp as well. And it was just my whole wallet had to sit there on the counter of the hotel and dry out because it was, I was soaked all the way through the jeans, the, the, everything. I mean, I'd like, I'd, it'd like I'd been in a pool. That's how bad it was. The other time that was criminal was the Sydney experience at Blacktown Ballpark, which is the home of the Olympics uh, back in 19, uh, 19, 2000, the Sydney Games, they played their uh, bronze and silver medal games for baseball and softball at this place called Blacktown International Sports Park, which is in uh, western Sydney, out to maybe an hour from the Harbor Bridge and all that that you've seen in the Opera House, which you've seen on uh, 
uh, on the TV and all that was way, way out. And it was so hot there, our gear starts to smoke. And, and literally, I can, I'm afraid that our computers are going to, both laptops for Paul and I, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna melt. So we shut our laptops down, put them away, because it was getting actually sort of, one of our laptops was almost pliable. You feel it bending. So we finished the broadcast on our phones because it was so hot. We had this ridiculous sunburn. We looked like two tomatoes. But it was it, our equipment was actually melting on the air. That's how hot it was in the city that day. Evan, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Speaking of Australia, Cam, speaking of Australia as well. I was just talking. It's like Australia talk now. All my Australia mates are uh, chiming in here. Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, Kevin that's uh, telling us that uh, – where was Kevin's comment here? Let me find it here. Uh, still love listening to baseball. Thank you very much, uh, very much for the kind words. I, 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 I'm glad I'm a legend besides my own mind, but I appreciate it very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, it's, it's Minnesota. Well, I missed something, Kevin. What did I miss? Oh, here we go. <laughs> I get it. Many, <laughs> Minneapolis has declared their beaches closed for summer already. That's his first statement. Of course, he's up with the Twin Cities. And then Kevin chimes in with a follow-up. Ridiculous how much Minnesota's overreacted. Yes. Hey, you know, as far as beach destinations go in North America, you've got Cancun, you go Cabo, you've got Miami, you've got the Keys, you've got the, the Outer Banks, and you've got Charleston, and you've got Myrtle Beach, and you've got California, and all that. And then you've got the greatness of the Twin City beaches, right, Minneapolis, St. Paul beaches. So uh, yes, uh, I'm glad that he's being smart up there. I don't want anybody to to uh, do not get get hurt surfing in Minneapolis. So uh, let's see here. Um, wow, the cancel the state fair. Kevin says too. Media up there has already discussed the possibility of discussing or canceling the state fair that doesn't start till August. Wow. Yeah, it, it's crazy, guys. I, you know, I was on a conference call this morning about baseball, and you know, it's. It's it's a weird time, and uh, you know, when we do get back to normal, it's going to be. My wife and I were talking this morning. Yeah, we we still may be different despite it all. I mean, it's still going to be uh, our favorite restaurant going to Tupanaba and still be six feet of, from everybody else. I mean, I don't think we'll all be sitting shoulder to shoulder. It's going to change a lot of things in sports and in, in, in entertainment, uh, Broadway shows, for example, which we love to do. Uh, when we get up to New York, and it's going to be a little different. There'll be differences, but I think one thing is for sure, and we talked about this a little bit last week with you guys, or at least I mentioned this, that there's a time and a place for everything. Right now, it's not the time for baseball. It's not the time for us uh, uh, getting out and about. It's not that time yet. There'll be a time for that. And when that time comes, we'll all embrace it, rather than be we have to be six feet, of, feet apart. Or be thankful for what we have and still be thankful for those things we can do. So uh, that's kind of the way I'm thinking about it. I mean, I know things will always be different, but at some point we will all be, you know, the, uh, you know again, some semblance of normal. We'll just be thankful. I don't think we'll be, I won't, you won't hear me whinge about, Hey, I got to sit six feet apart at the movies. I, I mean, I'm just glad we're going to the movies, you know, I mean, glad we're going to our favorite restaurant. So that being said, uh, mom tried to get on failure at that. How'd you fail that mom? I don't know what mom did, but uh, mom didn't have a successful um, try at that. Michael, going to see as well. Talking about broadcasting, he's a good one right there. But a lot of you folks, it's I love seeing all the folks joining and uh, up up north and down south and over in Australia. All right, uh, weekend was great here. One thing we are going to be doing, and I'm going to let you guys be a part of this is that I've been asked to do some videos for the Kansas City T-Bones. And one thing I am going to do, which I'm kind of excited about in sort of a roundabout way, is uh, uh, doing a little cooking demonstration on video. I've always wanted to do that, you know, the cooking show. You know, we, we, we've all watched it, right? You know, the you know the, the be the whatever it is, the, the cooking shows. And you know, I guess lately it's been Guy, you know, Guy Ramsey with his – a rescue show and all that. So I, 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 I'm not, I don't, I got, no, got, I got him mixed up. Ramsey, which one's which? Uh, you know the guy I'm talking about, right? Gordon Ramsey, Guy Ramsey. Yeah, guy, guy Fieri is the other guy, right? All right, you know what I'm talking about. Ramsey. Gordon Ramsey, the, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Good, good gracious. Um, 
I've always kind of wanted to do just to take a stab at that. So we're actually going to try later on this week to take a stab at that for the T-Bones and do a little a recipe suggestion for the T-Bone Faithful up in Kansas City. So we'll try that. Um, uh, where was my invite to golf with – I don't know – about the the invite to golf with Michael and Brad Allred, although uh, I don't know, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where my invite was. Um, I guess I got to check that out. Brad Allred is the voice of the Cleveland Railroaders. I have to find out. So uh, to check and see. All right, looks like the green room has. Oh, by the way, up the top here. There we go. Uh, there's your link right there. That's to the virtual green room. Uh, I can bring you guys in and you can uh, set the table itself virtually and a little chat. So, uh, yes, I do cook, Ryan. Uh, uh, it, it's a big part of the house. Um, try to anyway. Uh, not during the season, though. Baseball season is almost impossible because you don't get, you know, I get in going in early and I'm getting back, you know, midnight or whatever. Uh, you, at home and then, uh, but yeah, I try to, yeah, I, I try to, um, not, not nearly as good of a cook as my other two brothers, but I try to do uh, decent work and we're going to, we're going to do a little cooking uh, demonstration on, uh, the T-Bones channels this week. So it should be fun, but, uh, all righty here. So let's see who did join it. Oh, but, but she did, she did join in and she found the virtual, the virtual door and there she is. Mom, what are you doing? Are you asleep? No. That's the simple answer. No. I was trying. I'm in all my glory. I no makeup. I do have. I do not have my pajamas on. Well, that's a little bit too much detail, Mom. You can move the camera yeah. down. You want to see is your eyes. You're like this villain. Like villain. There you go. Well, well okay, go. She's joining us from Indiana, Mom. What's going on? What are you? What's, what are you doing up there besides just kicking it? Uh, well, having uh, some of my artisan leftovers. Having some of my Michaels. Uh, Italian restaurant leftovers and, and and a huge glass of wine from 2004. I'm I'm robbing my basement stash. So there you go. Do do they deliver wine in Indiana, Mom? Is that against the law? No, they deliver wine in Indiana, but I'm not okay. out. Of, I had 90 bottles in the basement, so I'm I'm still working on those. So you're safe for another what two days? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Did you uh, did you enjoy what my wife did on uh, on Friday when she broke the tequila bottle? Did you enjoy that? Oh yes, I, I was sad because tequila is. I mean, I had a margarita that night just in, it, just for her. Yeah, well, you know that's that's what you got to do. Is it snowing up there, by the way, Mom, or not? No, I I walked today, and I sat out in my stool and talked to the neighbors at more than six feet distance. Okay. So, so we were we were in the fifties. So, gonna rain tomorrow. So I've got to make the best of it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Did you watch anything good on TV this weekend? Is there anything? Does, what do, you, oh. do you have any streaming recommendations, Mom? No. Well, you know, my I, if I start streaming, I fall asleep. But, uh, <laughs> but last night I watched the ACM from the homes. That was interesting. And then I watched Garth and Trisha. At, at 10 o'clock in at, at, at request time, Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood. That was pretty special. Yeah, I'm familiar with them. Yes, it's familiar with their work. I saw Garth Brooks uh, when he was his first album back at, uh, I think it was, uh, what was that place called, Ryan? It wasn't Midnight Rodeo. Well, Midnight Rodeo, but he played at the other place out there off of uh, off the Slayton Highway, and I can't remember the name of that place. It's still there. There was an old hotel and honky-tonk out there. Boy, Ryan would know. He says hi, mom. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we uh, we didn't we didn't watch that. We watched Trisha and Garth uh, Thursday night, I guess it was, or Wednesday night. They had their little show that night. It's pretty good. They were yeah. jamming. Well, you know that I thought that was better than crying at, on a romantic movie. Well, uh, yeah, I guess. I, or yeah, there's no yeah. romance in this house, as I've got all I've got to say. Well, you know, Mom, the last – that one date you did have, you put him in the obituary page, didn't you? Is that true? Correct, correct Amante. <laughs> this is a true story. i got to share about my greatness of my mom. She's awesome. I uh, love her dearly. But a few years ago when I was in Gary, Indiana, working with the Railcats, uh, Mom had a date with this guy maybe six, eight months before. And then uh, I was there for the like an off day or something, and the Sunday paper was there. And, and uh, she showed me that, yeah, I had a date with this guy. I said, you went out with him and he – with the obituary page. 
<laughs> so in other words, gentlemen callers, beware. If you're a, a gentleman in your in your in mom's wheelhouse in Indiana, be careful. She'll put you in the grave. Well, yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> hey. hey, but you, hey, you got plenty of wine though, Mom. I'm glad. Hey, hey, uh, can you see my wine? Because uh, yes. I can't see. Today is uh, today is your nephew's birthday. I mean, my nephew's birthday. Your and grandson's your nephew, birthday. My grandson. Yeah, you're, he's he's what is he? Nineteen. Nineteen years old and not allowed to drink. Uh, did I say that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Bennett, Bennett Vaughn, by the way, who's uh, uh, in, uh, he's a is he would be a freshman in hot college, something like that. Is that what he is? Well, he's working on that, I believe. Yeah, freshman in college. He was nineteen today. How about that? Yeah, he's a. Uh, can't believe he's 19, though, Mom. That's crazy. I know. Crazy, he, crazy. He needs to be 21 pretty soon, though. Yeah. Uh, Kevin says, Mom, that was a dead-end relationship that you had with that gentleman, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, w it was a dead-end because it ha never happened again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, uh, you you pretty much pretty much took care of that. That'd be That's a special talent. We uh, oh, yeah. we, we, we need to do we need to do what we did last night, Mom. And I, I, don't know if you, I don't know if other families are doing this. I think there are some families doing this, but last night we had a bit of a, uh, we did a little family Zoom call. We made to do the same thing. Have you and the, the, you know, the, the grandkids in Denver and then if we can find oh, Bennett, no. you know, Denver, everybody get together. Denver, that's, that's an excellent way to happen. Yeah. We could all get like a long, long Zoom call, right? Do a yeah, little. Well, you're going to be proud of me. Friday, I had a lesson from the foundation here for the Council on Aging that I'm the chairman of the board. And she was trying to teach three old people how to do Zoom. Now that oh. was, that was a tragedy because on my on my desktop I have no camera. Right. So that so I had to chime in on my phone, which was since I'm the chairman, I need to be a little bit more steady than on my phone. So so I'm learning to do Zoom because my next meeting, which we we're going to have to distance ourselves, is going to be on Zoom. Uh, but it's three weeks away, so I've got some time to experiment. Well, you do. I got mom. I got mom cam, and Ryan said you need to have your own show. Yes, you do. You need to have your own show, mom. <laughs> well, hey, you. If you have, no, so you don't know, read my episodes, but my episodes. I do. Are, are noteworthy. Yeah, she, they're good. Well, you can do what we used to do in Gary. Do you remember the? Remember we used to do in Gary? We used to have that show called Dog in It, where we we do an interview a player. And we the interview would last as long as the hot dog lasts. Do you remember that? We could do the same yeah. thing. We could, you could do your show, and it would last as long as the glass of wine lasted, or maybe the long as the bottle lasted. That'd be good. It's well, a good concept. Well, the bottle's already three glasses down tonight, so I'd be way ahead. Yeah, see? I mean, that, that, way, that way you won't go too long. You have a good show. You know, you won't go for four or five hours, and everybody's entertained. And you could even – I'm just, I'm just trying to think out of the, bo the box. Uh, yeah, well, hey. Well, I, I, I need to have my own blog, I guess, or whatever the hell. Oh, sorry. Did I say that? That's okay. Whatever. You, it's, I'm it's, Southern it's okay. Baptist, but I, 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 I take my liberties. But anyway, I need to uh, do something. Uh, people are, I have uh, 80 people that read my episodes on Facebook. I'm like, they're so stupid, you know, and I'm like, oh, well. So get over to your other people that are commenting. All right. Well, I just want to say, I just want to say, hi, mom. We love you. Well, I actually am on. Is that true? What? I'm on. I'm live. Yes, you're God, live. That, that ugly old broad's on live. That's scary. Okay, get back. All right, love you, mom. Love you too. All right, bye. bye. There she goes. There she goes. Mom cam right there. Ryan saying, "Gonna uh, have fun." Uh, thanks for doing the happy hour. Lots of fun. Thanks, Ryan. Good to see you, mate. By the way, uh, Ryan, if you guys uh, do like sports, and you know, a lot of you do. And you were in, the, especially your Big 12 or Red Raiders, your Red Raiders out there, uh, you should uh, definitely uh, check Ryan Hyatt Media out on Twitter. Ryan Hyatt Media out on Twitter. He has a, a really, does a, does a morning show there in Lubbock, but uh, a lot of Big 12 stuff, a lot of West Texas stuff, a lot of Texas stuff, and, and some national stuff, some really good stuff. Ryan is a a long time mate of mine. We worked together many, many moons ago in uh, Tech Grab, but he's a phenomenal guy. Got great stuff. Uh, checked it out. Ryan Hyatt Media in his show. I believe it comes on. He does it nightly. Again, it's it's very Red Raider centric. But even KU folks and KSU folks, you like Big Twelve and want to be educated in the Big Twelve. He's a great guy to listen to, and he'll he'll have some Mahomes talk too here and there too. He's a a big Mahomes guy as well, and uh, 
uh, go check Ryan out as well. All right, where were we? Um, uh, yeah, uh, my wife chimes in too. That uh, <laughs> very funny. Uh, she, uh, th this is a good story. You guys want a good story? A, a good story. For, and I, actually, she's going to join us. I want her to tell the story because I am. I was just beside myself. So uh, I'm going to bring the wife in so she can tell the story. Um, here at Virtual Happy Hour. Glad you guys are along, Virtual Happy Hour. Glad you're here. All right, and there's Max. There's the dog. How you doing, buddy? He looks very, 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 uh, not very enthused. Oh, hello, Jim. How are you? Over. I'm fine. All right. Uh, you want to tell a story about the, the, you and my mom watching whatever it was you guys are watching? <laughs> well, I could throw um... – Celeste and Michelle and Joe under the bus as well because they were watching it with me. Hold on, my sister and her husband who live in Denver. That's uh, my yeah, sister we actually. Were, will, uh, that, we that's her picture Indiana. right there. Right there. That's her picture oh, that's there. That's a good picture. Yeah, that's her. Um, the front line. And we were in Indiana. I think it was the weekend of the bash, the wedding. I, I don't know. Maybe it was before that. No, it was July. Yeah, maybe it was wedding time. We were leading up to the wedding. Your mom, um, Joe and Celeste Michelle and I were stuck in there and we were watching your mom's cable channels and we stumbled across this show called Dating Naked. And we all just burst out laughing going, how on earth would that work? And sure enough, these people would show up on the show butt naked. And then the other contestant would come out butt naked and they would go on a date. And then she calls me and tells me all this, and I was mortified that they're, that my, they're she's watching that with my mom. I was just like, "What?" Your mom wanted to go to the show. Who are you kidding? Oh my gosh! gosh. <laughs> yeah, it was well, times. Your mom's a hoot. Yeah, she is. A, she needs her own show, but I think it's she should do the whole wine thing. You know, when the bottle's gone, the show's over. <laughs> Sounds like you know? a plan. Man, like the old dog in it show we did, which I'm going to bring back to Kansas City this year, I believe. The dog in it show. So, uh, yeah. how did the boy? How was school today? Because, okay, now in our household, you know, I'm basically upstairs all day in my office, closed in. You were downstairs. I heard you going early this morning with the virtual classroom. How How is that going, the virtual classroom? The, the virtual classroom. Um, it's just that. It's a virtual classroom. Um, for all the people that are saying, oh, now that we've all gone, we've all learned that students can learn online, what I have to say to them is what we've learned is that students hate going to class online. They would rather be with their friends and with their teacher and have somebody explain stuff with them. But it was fine. We spent an hour talking about how much they hated it. <laughs> Not really. We talked about... Um, some big projects that they were in the middle of and how we're going to tackle that. And we have a Shakespeare left to do. And we were talking about how that was going to go down. It, you know, I, I think most of my job at this point is just helping them stay focused and relaxed, knowing that they'll be okay. We've got some changes coming with grades. And so some of them had questions with that. And then I had an advisory meeting with my senior boys who my heart just breaks for because they're just missing so much of the fun of being a senior those last couple of weeks when you're pretty much done, you're into college and you just have exams left and you know, you've got senior week coming up and the prank and skip day. And the, for us, the marksman ball and, and, um, so I pose this question, baccalaureate and graduation. Which yeah, I pose this question to you today that, that it must be crazy because think about it. If you're a C, if you were, a, she teaches at a school, in Dallas called St. Mark's and regardless if it's St. Mark's or wherever, but if you were a kid going to school in North Texas, you've gone through this, this is what your senior year has been. You had a, you had a tornado that blew yeah, through in town October. in October and now you've got no school in the spring to finish the semester. And there's been I mean, a what, lot of families that have had a rough, a lot of personal, you know, hurdles and the, the boys are amazingly resilient amazingly kind and amazingly service oriented. So they're not big complainers. So even though I say we kind of grab how we didn't like it, most of them, you know, are, are kind of just plugging along and, and trying to figure out ways to make things work that, you know, they've just learned that if some if life throws you something hard, you, you face it. And I, I appreciate that a lot. 
about them. They're really, really going to be really good men one day. I'm mm-hmm. happy about that. You're doing a heck of a job teaching them there. Let's see here. Uh, Kevin says, former Saints PA guy Eric Webster has been doing daily morning announcements. <laughs> this is good. Announcements for his daughter awesome. before she starts virtual school uh, for that That's day. That's a great that, idea. Well, we talked about this last week. Remember, um, uh, it would have been uh, Jeff Stanley. Jeff Stanley, my mate Jeff Stanley, and I, on April Fool's last Wednesday, woke his stepson up said, look, school's done, get dressed, get your backpack loaded, we're going to school. <laughs> and the kid got all dressed up, got his That's backpack, dro- actually drove him to school, and then said, oh, April Fool's. That's and, of course, so I saw the video of the, of the, of the young the family that girls get all dressed up for school, and they were not too happy when they found out when the call. But I like that. You know, uh, good mo- Should I do it for Caroline, maybe? She'd love that. Yeah. Caroline, well, no, Caroline's no, asleep no. upstairs till about two, so I can do it like about noon. Going, uh, Caroline, this announcement's for you. Today's lunch menu is. Should I try that? Oh, the dryer's going crazy. Well, do you too. remember my parenting epic fail on April Fool's Day? I told Caroline her fish died. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and not good. This was, she was not like, a good. Mom, that's terrible. This was not a good April Fool's joke. The wife told her that, yeah, her fish died, and that was not funny. But then she said, well, I got a tattoo. So there. Yeah, and she didn't get a here. tattoo. Just to clarify, there were no tattoos that being. She got a big tattoo on my back, she said. Yeah, it was hilarious. Funny. She paid you right back. He calls this high school San Quentin home of the Quint- Quarantina. Quarantina is very funny. That's, That's good. very, very funny. See how much fun we have in this thing? They have pep rallies in the room, and they, oh, that's funny. They have uh, pep rallies, he says, in the family room in the afternoon. That's very good. Well, I noticed, too, we're talking about our friend Brett Allred, that the family had a wrestling night on um, Saturday night, wrestling at his house. All the family dressed up in, in wrestling characters. They had a big family wrestle show on Facebook. I didn't see it, but I saw the replay. Very well, I funny. I told you that on Sunday that we should have gotten up early and like gotten all gussied up. To come downstairs to watch church on YouTube. So hey, I watched church in my shirt off on in, in, in my bed. That's awesome. Yeah, that was very uncomfortable. Yes, not to mention poor Sunday school class. I couldn't be on video because I didn't look real good. Yeah, at least we're on but time. I we should like get up and just like really go the, to town. The sad part party. about it is we're always late to Sunday school, like a good forty-five minutes late. We get the last ten minutes of it. When we go to church. Well, today we, we were only one minute early this last week. So. I know. We woke up at 944 and it started at 945. I'm like, hey, no worries. I can just take the video off. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> show man. a picture of us perfectly dressed and happy going, you know. And, hey. Uh, hey, it's what you got to do. Well, that's du- that, that oh, right there. Oh, oh. Uh-oh, there it is. One on? That, that right. It's WD-40 Cam and Max the dog who's probably uh, barking at the mailman as we speak. Thank you, love. Love you. I'll see you in a bit. Dinner. Bye. Bye. Right, see you, mate. See you, buddy. There we go, W40, checking in. That's W40 Cam. Now back to me. All right, uh, we're, I, I did to do the top of wheel here. i got to catch up here. Uh, Cheryl, good to see you. Go T-Bones, Kevin, uh, Tammy, Kaylin, Mark, all you guys. Good to see all y'all out there. Roger Long, Jill earlier up in Canada. Uh, again, we've had been a good happy hour. We've had Canada. We've had uh, Twin Cities. We've had Indiana. We've had all over Texas. Uh, all over Australia, Western Australia. Pretty good show so far. Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas City. So we've had all really in the middle of the country and uh, all set up. Uh, a couple things that, uh, for me anyway, as we welcome back to virtual happy hour here. Uh, by the way, I still got a little time. I uh, will actually give you guys, if you want to jump on the green room, you can do that real quick. I've got the virtual green room, uh, a couple of spots open. If you want to join me live, here in the happy hour. If not, I'll just kind of throw out some random things anyway, but uh, there's your link right there. Uh, a couple things TV wise, we talked about uh, the Tiger King and that's kind of, I'm kind of past that. Although a few folks that have been watching that I did read this morning, there's going to be another episode, not a season, but one extra episode coming out very soon. And I don't have the exact date, but I did see this. They've gone in and done a follow-up with uh, the folks up there in Oklahoma and kind of a where are they now kind of deal. So that uh, I believe Netflix will be releasing that shortly. Uh, a couple other odds and ends as well. This week, Modern Family will be 
uh, their final episode on Wednesday. How about that show? Uh, groundbreaking show and uh, uh, the, their final episode. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, okay, for us, we watched a really interesting show. It was a four-part show. And it, it, I had to watch the preview first because I, I saw it a couple times. It was in the top 10 Netflix shows. And I was kind of, you know, I don't know about this thing. It, 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 you know, I'm a real strange TV guy. You, you got to really sell me on a show. I mean, I'm watching Breaking Bad now five years after the fact. And it's got me hooked. But I didn't want to watch it then because at the time, that subject matter didn't, it, it didn't interest me. But it, it's weird how... Eventually, I get back to it. Well, this one sort of, sort of interests me. Sort of didn't. It's called Unorthodox. And uh, when I saw the little screenshot, I was like, eh, eh. I'm figuring it was some kind of, you know, I don't know, uh, smash them up, not smash them up, man. Some kind of haunted thing to me. That's what I thought it was. Turns out it's a four part series. And it's about uh, this uh, young lady who uh, is in the uh, New York, uh, New York City, the Williamsburg area, which is uh, known for it's the Hasidic uh, Jewish community there. If you've ever been to New York or that part of the, the world, uh, the, the real ultra Orthodox Jewish community founded uh, post World War II, and most of our Holocaust surviving family members, and that's where it based on. Anyway, it's very, very interesting because it's very uh, uh, old school um, to. Maybe the best way to say it, they arrange, you know, arrange marriages, things of that nature. Very, very, very traditional. And the basic premise of the show is this young lady um, finds out that uh, she kind of wants to do her own thing, and she actually goes to Germany. It's a very, very good show. It's four episodes. Uh, you can get through it in a couple of days. I think that each one's an hour, maybe. I think that's right. It, again, it's it's not. It may not be for everybody. It's not violent. It's not. Uh, uh, not a lot of uh, not, not a lot of f bombs and things like that, but it's a very interesting story as far as you know if you if you of of kind of that whole that whole genre of uh, you know trying to find your own way kind of thing. It's uh, if you've ever watched any of the the Sister Wives series or if you ever watched you know the the, the with um, any of that that kind of stuff on uh, uh, what's the what's the station? I'm getting the name of it now. You know the the you know, the Cody Brown, that whole thing. If you're interested in that, you might find this interesting. It's not plural marriage, but it's interesting. It's very interesting stuff. And uh, it's, again, it's four episodes. It's a, it's a mini series, I guess you'd call it. We used to call those. And uh, check that out. And again, that was our weekend. Um, also, uh, and we've got the season three of Breaking Bad still rolling right along with that. And then we've got, uh, what else have we been watching? Oh, Ozark. Back at Ozark again, it's back. Uh, if you've not watched Ozark, and I concur with Patrick Mahomes, who was in the same boat, he said TLC. Kevin said, "Right, TLC, you're right." Uh, Patrick Mahomes said that he was he, he looked forward to having Ozark round three, and he was fired up, but he wasn't sure if he wanted to uh, with his uh, with his uh, girlfriend watch the first two seasons again. Uh, decided to go and go to season three. But uh, that's what I've done. And uh, Gamer, he's kind of sort of watching over my shoulder. But uh, if you've not seen Ozark, uh, it's a good show. The season three is out now. One and two are already out, of course. And uh, it's uh, Jason Bateman, uh, Laura Linney, two uh, principals there. But very, very good stuff. It looks a lot like we spent our all-star breaks the last couple of years there at Lake of the Ozarks. I guess that's why it's called Ozark. So uh, uh, very good. If you Kansas City folks, there's kind of some some Kansas City uh, thrown in there as well, and uh, very good stuff. But uh, I urge you to watch. I'll dig into something else. What are you guys watching? I'm jugging the topic wheel today because we're almost an hour into this thing. Anybody watching anything good? Anything good out there that I'm missing besides what we've already heard so far? Love to know what you guys are watching. What are you guys doing? Anybody? It may just, I mean, obviously we're, is it the routine that you're in that I'm in? It's, it's very uh, sort of sleep, sleep a little later, but step a little later, but sleep a little later, but then try to get as much possible done as I can. Try to keep it as normal as you can. Then you're going to plan dinner out and then throw some TV. And that's kind of the routine. It kind of sounds, but the thing I've really enjoyed about it is that we're all, we're all chatting and talking more. That's, that's been the plus, I think, from this thing. I and mean, if there is no plus anytime people lose their lives, but 
being able to talk to my wife and uh, to the uh, the youngest and just chat a bit, and uh, it's it's been good. So uh, from that standpoint, so what are you guys watching? Anybody watching anything good? Should I watch? What do I got to watch? Come on, somebody's got something out there. Give me the virtual room is empty right now. So you can ninety day fiance. Yeah, uh, Kevin, I need I need to watch that because there is a show in Australia very much like that, uh, Married at First Sight, I believe. And I need to – 90 Day Fiance kind of sounds – I know GM watches that too. I may need to get in that. Uh, that may be the one I have to – AJ, good to see him eight as well. Oops. Oh, I bounced my screen off there. Uh, oh, and one more thing we are watching too. We mentioned Shit's Creek, but, yes, that, that one's one too. The one we runs in the, back, the Bachelor. Uh, yes, The Bachelor – I, I just feel, I've told you guys before, I just feel myself getting dumber by the moment when that happens. Uh, always reruns of The Bachelor, my wife says. Uh, those people are crazy, but uh, yeah, I need to watch that 90 Day Fiance. I'll dig up something more. But yeah, I'd recommend, if you want a short, quick, uh, an Orthodox is a good one. Uh, if you like a quick, it's kind of in the, it's not uncommon, especially overseas, for series to be limited runs, sometimes one or two seasons only. Uh, there was a really good, uh, and I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. I'll think about it for Wednesday. It was a, like a six-episode series about a, a, a bodyguard that guards the uh, British um, high, high Commission, or I'm sorry, British Home Secretary is their personal bodyguard. It was very interesting. It was only six episodes. That was it. But there's, it's not uncommon for overseas to have a lot of those limited-run series. I love those, too. Um yeah, Fleabag is what we act. See, here's the problem is that my wife and I have – we have this thing where during the, during the baseball season, she's watching a lot of shows because I'm busy, you know, traveling and doing my thing, and I I get limited TV time. I'm watching more uh, sports center news, the weather, things of that nature, where she's getting a chance to like, binge watch shows. And then during the school year, it kind of flips a bit, and I, I wind up – and so we wind up with this with this kind of off balance thing. So we try to find a way to meet the middle and watch some things together. So uh, try that a little bit. Yeah, marvelous Mrs. Maisel, she says as well. Uh, uh, Kevin says the four for so you say there's a four for loving guy who puts mayo in his hair. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, my mom says uh, only problem with the Bachelor is it's not the senior generation. Yeah. I, I think, see, that's what I think would be good. That's a good one. Maybe we should do that on Wednesday. Show ideas you'd like to see. How about that? Show ideas you'd like to see. I don't even, like I said, the, the topic jars right here and I haven't even reached it yet. I've always said the bachelor would interest me if like some kind of wheels off thing, the guy was poor or that, you know, there was something not right. Because they're all perfect. They're like, you know, all the girls are very attractive and very, you know, well done. And the fellows are always real buff and real handsome. They've got, you know, the, everything's perfect. I'd like to have an unperfect deal where maybe, you know, maybe one is living, you know, in less than, less than, maybe living in squalor. I don't know. Maybe one's a, a, a Maybe one's a fat guy. I don't know. Maybe he's a fat guy and he gets, you know, I don't know, throw, throw some tricks in there. Make it make it a little trickier. That's why I loved a few years ago. You folks in Australia will know this. There was that show the uh, that, that they, they dated the geek with all these really attractive women dated this geeky guy and kind of made over the geek. They all made him over from being the nerdy guy to this really cool guy and all the girls would try to compete over him. I mean, I, that's where I can throw that. Make it more reality. Morality. They get the big, the big fat guy gets the bachelorette. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Um, uh, yes, the Joe Buck play by play. Actually, I'll have to give you guys some bonus content on Wednesday. I'll have to do some house play by play for you. But Joe Buck, uh, of course, the Fox broadcaster, uh, the uh, son of uh, Jack Buck, the uh, longtime Cardinals and the national voice back in the day for. Uh, uh, for us folks, but uh, Joe Buck is doing a play by play. People are sending videos to him. He's doing play by play. And apparently, as the bit goes, he's had a lot of folks uh, send their uh, their intimate times in, their uh, 
they're behind the behind the, the behind the door scenes, I guess you could say, and he's he's got too many of those to narrate, so he's not narrating any of those anymore. But uh, apparently, he's had a few of those. I just got a uh, he's got a bunch on there. Kevin says Kevin says go to uh, Joe Buck Twitter account at Buck. He has a bunch on there. Yeah, I've heard they're great. There's also the guy I mentioned on Friday, the British guy that's doing these hilarious videos. He had the two labs, the black and the tan lab that were eating. He had one I saw last night where he had people crossing the street in the rain and, and it just random. It's very, very, you know, very British humor, very you know, stoic, how they you know keep that chin out front kind of thing. Very good. It's very good stuff. But uh, Craig, good to see you, mate. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, you don't want to see that GM. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, but yes, uh, there there is those play by play things. So check those out. But uh, I don't know where I was at with that. But the four wheel buggy races. Yes, the the one that was hilarious was the four wheel buggy races. They took a pray or a stroller. We call it in America. It's a when you put the kid in it and you roll the kid. They call it a stroller here, a, a pram in Australia, I believe. And they were and the guy did a race of these moms walking the park with their kids in a stroller. And it's, he called the four wheel buggy races is very good. Very good. Uh, AJ, have a good day, mate. I hope you're, hope you're doing well. And uh, good to see you out there as well. Yeah, four wheel buggy races, but uh, like the, uh, AJ, I like the, uh, the mask too. By the way, we got our mask. Uh, can I uh, have my mask please? Belinda, good to see you as well. I need to show you guys this before I shut off because, uh, Rob treated Joe Buck offering to make donation. Buck records the opening for this week of the association. Well, I like that. I want to show you guys what uh, uh, what we have, I believe, if my wife will bring it to me. We had some custom-made masks. The government of the United States of America, which where we're at for my kitchen here today, uh, has issued a, a – it's not a, a law or a, a mandatory deal, but they're issuing a recommendation that you should – wear a mask when you go outside and in the public. Well, you know, for us, it's just walking the dog or whatever, but we have custom made masks and I don't know who, for a student's mom, is this correct? No, a neighbor. A neighbor of ours. A neighbor of ours. Well, don't get tired of me. All right, here we go. It's my custom made mask here. Well. This goes your nose too. Oh, is it on my nose too? Okay. What about this thing here? Yeah, just to shut you up. All right, folks, I'm in my homemade mask. How about this, huh? It customized, oops. Uh, Put on your nose. On your nose, there we go. Customized uh, homemade mask here. Custom, uh, my only problem is when I'm inside, you breathe and you're wearing glasses, it fogs your glasses up like you're in a bad snorkel. What do you think? You look cute. You look good? Yeah. <laughs> what a, Craig, <laughs> Craig, very funny. Very, very funny. What <laughs> Would a catcher's mask apply? Uh, I would think so. Hockey mask, catcher's mask. I would like that. I think it would apply. Uh, yeah, but yeah. This is my homemade homemade mask. We got uh, one for uh, each of us in the house, and then my uh, mother and father-in-law also got them. Yeah, these are nice. This is nice. Nice. Yeah, thank you very much. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, Kevin chimes in. I have a. If I have to wear a mask, what one of Gene Simmons like tongue airbrushed on it. There you go. There you go. There are some of those out there. There are some of those out there. Okay. All right. I like this. I mean, I, I saw where uh, uh, some are T-bone faithful. Max, you made T-bone mask and all that. So, uh, yes. There you go. There's my virtual, not virtual. There's my real mask. There you go. There you go. That's that's the mask. So uh, we have our own mask, but the, the government's recommended that you wear those if you go out. And, of course, we're not going out anywhere except for to walk the dog and then the patio to grill chicken. What are you doing? No, don't, don't hang me. Thank you very much, my love. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Uh, we've gone a little bit of an hour. Glad you guys are along, and I will uh, let you guys go. Um, but uh, glad you guys joined me today. We did. It's been nice. No topic wheel. No topic jar today. We didn't do that. Mom jumped on. Make sure no one else jumped in. And I do encourage you guys next Wednesday. I'd love to have some of you guys uh, join in and join the fun with us. And. Uh, catch up on what uh, you guys are doing. I want to know what you're doing and what is going on, how you're doing. And uh, if you're uh, just, just what we're all doing, we're all just trying to, to uh, stay social. I mentioned this and I keep saying it. 
you know, when I have these little conference calls with the broadcasters and with my teammates in Kansas City, you, 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 the interaction's good. And I miss all you guys. So many people that we're not seeing, you know, friends of ours from church, our friends in Kansas City, our Australian friends. I mean, there's just so many people here in Dallas. I mean, even the, the folks I know at the coffee shop, I'm not seeing them. We're not, we're not interacting. And this is one way to sort of, you know, maybe for a few minutes, just to kind of catch up and let me talk for a few minutes and let you guys sit there and listen to my nonsense and feel like we're all sitting around at a pub table and having a little chat and we're all just uh, sharing whatever and uh, some random subjects. And maybe I guess uh, Wednesday, we'll, uh, I'll probably give you a little video preview Wednesday. We'll also, uh, uh, I want to do some uniform talk. I know uh, some uh, sports uniform talk, we'll do that. And maybe some music talk as well. All that are bore and whatever you guys want to talk about. We'll, we'll, we'll jump in, we'll have the virtual green room open for you and we'll bring you guys in and have a little uh, virtual happy hour there on Wednesday, five o'clock central time. I don't believe I'll be too late. Yeah, we're in Jersey there. We'll do a Jersey on Wednesday. There you go. I don't. I do have my virtual happy hour with the T-Bones uh, at four o'clock, but it goes from four to five. So we may be a few minutes late, so bear with me. Maybe uh, around, um, you know, maybe around four or five fifteen or so. Maybe five ten, but it will be around the five o'clock hour. We'll do it and uh, do it on Wednesday. Kevin says, "Help me help keep the sanity, keep the good work." Thank you very much, my friend. Appreciate it, mate. Uh, thank you very much, Mom, as well. Thank you guys for the kind words. Just, again, it's just a way it, it, for me. You know, usually, you know, it's a month out from. I usually go to Kansas City on May first, usually around that time, and I'm getting, you know, kind of in that mode now. My last month at home, do as many things as the family and kind of uh, enjoy myself, but also with one with one eye focused on the baseball season. Well, uh, at the moment. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I, we, we don't have a lot of answers. We do know that the T-Bones will uh, play baseball. We expect to start in May, but we don't have an official word because no one else is playing ball except uh, they're doing some spring training games in Korea. But, you know, it's one of those deals where usually I'm kind of getting in the in-season mode and these kind of things are usually going on, you know, talking T-Bones baseball three or four days a week. And uh, instead we're just doing, uh, we're uh, just kind of sitting and looking at each other. But, uh, uh, this is good for my sanity too, mom, but uh, it definitely helps me, helps me stay just engaged with you guys. And again, I think the great thing about this, there's a lot of bad things about social media, but I keep saying, you know, all these folks that have joined us today, and I've talked to you guys from all over the world, literally all over the world, all over this country, uh, friends of mine from so many different backgrounds and so many different places we've met along the way on this great journey we call life. And it's it's great to be able to share that with you guys, even for just a few minutes. It does help my sanity as well. So uh, I hope it helps your sanity. And we're all just uh, going through this thing together. Please be safe this week. Um, you know, just have a good day tomorrow. We'll see you on Wednesday. Happy hour Wednesday again, five o'clock Central Daylight Time in the U.S. of A., which would be uh, seven a.m. in the Great West. Is that right? Is that right, Paul? Paul's name all here. I'm, I'm deferring to Paul, who's probably still having his coffee, getting, getting the kids ready as well. But uh, uh, good to see all you guys. I thank you for everyone joining us. I appreciate it, uh, Mom especially, and my wife on Mom Cam and WD40 Cam. Uh, yeah, that's a, something too. You know, can you imagine 20 years ago? I, I can't imagine being in high school in 1985 and having to go through this because we would have been. I mean. I don't know what we would have done. We would, I mean, it would have been crazy. I, I, I think what it has done, and maybe, maybe, maybe it wouldn't have been this, this way, but I think it's helped us a little bit because of the social media and this doing things we shouldn't be doing, meaning, you know, the temptation I think for a lot of us would have been back in the day, meh, I'll go, I'll go out anyway. I'll go out and meet my friends, even though we're not supposed to. And I'll, not to, but you're going to go away. I think now people are still doing that. People are still violating that. But I think by and large, the temptation for me is not there because uh, I have this and, and the reality of things being so rough out there. So I think that's also a plus as well. So anyway, uh, blessings to all of you. Thanks for joining me. Uh, quickly here, and we will uh, also put the uh, virtual 
happy hour sign up as well as a little directing here on the fly. Again, thanks for joining me. Appreciate all you. Love to all you guys. And wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, wherever you're viewing, we'll see you on Wednesday, same time, same place. Hopefully, we'll have some exciting, riveting content, whatever that'll be. I don't know. If it's just me talking for an hour, it may just be me talking for an hour, and I may have two, two viewers. All good. Appreciate you guys. Love you all. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. And please, uh, wash those hands, everybody. <laughs>